Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store, where I've compiled some of the very best items available, including some of my own personal recommendations. Thanks! What's going on YouTube? Middle Complex here, and today I've got another interesting review to share with you guys. Uh, this is not a knife, this is actually an EDC pry bar. I do occasionally review pieces of gear that are not knives. Primarily what I do on this channel is review folding knives, but occasionally I do some EDC gear, and this one uh, is certainly something that I had seen and was interested in, and because of at Eric B. Like on Instagram, I am able to take a look at this guy, and I'm pretty excited about it, so I'm, I'm excited to share my thoughts. Um, please give him a like. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me during this time. If you'd like to get your hands on those cool stickers and some other exclusive benefits, there is a link down in the description. Your support would absolutely mean the world to me. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Overall length of the Lynch, uh, excuse me, this is the Lynch Northwest <laughs> All Access Pass V2.5, as far as I'm aware. I didn't say that, but you probably surmised that from the title of the video. It's coming in at, it's like 3.3, 3 3.3 inches uh, overall. I'll let you guys kind of look at that here. We're zoomed in and at an awkward angle, um, but that's what it's uh, looking like is a little over three and a quarter there. Um, we'll go ahead and do some size comparisons. Let's turn it, let's turn it this way. Uh, up against the Ontario Rat Model 1, you can see there the Rat 1 being a folding knife. <laughs> it's kind of a silly size comparison. Uh, coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian? Or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. The Ritter Hogue is coming in at 8 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at uh, seven and a quarter inches overall. So this is a small item. Do I have a battery? Yeah, got a regular double A battery here. I think that might serve as a better size comparison if I can dig that out of here. There you go. There's a regular battery and uh, how big that is compared to that. So that uh, might help for people who are not here for folding knives and have no idea why I would use them as a size comparison here. Uh, so how's the action of this guy? I'm just kidding. I made that joke way too many times. This is a little folding pry bar. I'm sorry, folding pry bar. A little a, a, a titanium pry bar. Uh, it's made out of titanium, um, and it has the uh, uh, the Lynch Northwest clip on there. Um, it's funny how difficult it seems for people to make a good EDC pry tool. Why? What's the purpose of an EDC pry tool? Well, um, I don't like to use... Unlike my dad, I don't like to use my folding knife as a screwdriver or pry bar, nail puller, uh, anything like that. Uh, I don't have a use for a full-size pry bar in my day-to-day -day life, but I certainly do come across situations where the thing that needs to be done might require um, an object that um, could withstand, uh, you know, uh, the, the damage that would otherwise be sustained by uh, a blade. I want my blade to be sharp. I want the tip to be pointy. I don't want to screw those things up uh, because I lose the benefit of utility sometimes. Excuse me. If that were to happen. So this is nice, you know, for uh, opening a bottle, for doing some light prime, for pulling a nail, right? It's wonderful. That's the idea with this. And having something that is in incredibly, uh, you know, small and not cumbersome and that clips to your pocket uh, is, is fantastic. And that's, uh, what we, what we've got here. And it's funny to me how it, that, that idea, that philosophy is lost in EDC pry bar designs. I've seen so many different ones. And for so long, I've just been like, geez, just put a freaking pocket clip on it. That's removable. Let me carry it flat up against, you know, my leg the same way that I would a folding knife and then add simple, you know, something that I can pry with and, and open a bottle with. That's, that's what I want. That's what most people want. <laughs> it's funny how that's lost in the dimensions or that the clip design is weird. I've handled a lot of little EDC pry tools and a lot of them were okay. Some of them have been pretty decent, but this one's great. And uh, it's made out of titanium and it's made in the United States. Now, I'm going to tell you guys right now, these are kind of difficult to get a hold of. Uh, they're not available on the website and they're not available on, on a lot of retailers as far as I can tell. But they, uh, depending on when you're watching this video, perhaps somebody knows of a retailer where they're available um, or, uh, you know, maybe you're watching this way in the future and they're, they're way readily available or way not readily available. I don't know. They're not easy to get a hold of. So that can be a problem. But 
Um, I did find, you know, once again, they are made in the United States. And the warranty on these guys is impressive. If I read it correctly, it's, uh, you know, replacement parts or, you know, uh, the full full guarantee for life, No, you know, no matter what. And then it even says, like, crazy, right? Question <laughs> mark. That's great. You know, that's awesome. It's not an inexpensive item. You know, this is a little pry bar. And I understand... Listen, guys, you can get a little EDC pry tool. I, are my keys here? They're not here. I got one of those little, the little widgy pry bars that are made out of steel. You can get those for 12 bucks. You can get the titanium ones for a little bit more. Um, but, um, you know, yeah, and it'll do relatively the same thing. So if we're going to reduce the value to just that, um, then I guess, you know, just go buy one of those. But truthfully, this offers enough additional convenience in, in terms of, you know, its overall design and, and everything that I can do with it and how it's shaped that, I'm willing to spend some more money for this, especially considering, yeah, it is made in the United States. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to support a company who has created something that fits what I want out of it exactly. Um, let's go ahead and weigh it here real quick. Uh, overall weight on this guy coming in at nothing, <laughs> not even an ounce. Doesn't weigh anything. Uh, it's also not thick. Doesn't need to be thick, right? It's not something that's made to do heavy duty pry tasks, just simple tasks, right? Uh, 150, 100, yeah, it looks to be about 150 thousandths or so. So your typical ZT blade stock thickness. Um, the best things about this knife, I mean, like there's no, well, I guess we technically could do a little hardware check here real quick. Um, it looks like there's a little hex style pivot in, or a little hex, I want to say pivot, a little hex screw in there so you can remove the pocket clip. Should be pretty simple. Um, and it, it looks nice. I mean, the pocket clip is great. It's going to carry deep. Um, it's even got the swoop that I like. And that's why I like the Lynch clips and the MXG deep carry clips so much. Sorry to reference probably one of his direct competitors, but I like these clips because they're deep carry and they have the little swoop. The, the screw's not recessed. I, I guess they could make that change and make it a little better, but Whatever. I mean, truthfully, I mean, I'm in athletic shorts right now. This item is convenient to carry no matter what you are dressed in. It is small enough. It is light enough. It carries appropriately enough to carry it in just whatever. Carry it in your jacket. This is something that I honestly would put in a jacket pocket and just leave it there, right? So it's always there every time I leave the house, unless it's summertime, in which case I wouldn't be wearing a jacket. But yeah, this is this is something that I would just like to keep on an article of clothing that I wear, you know, a lot. Um, and you know, if you, like if, if it is summertime, then you just put it wherever, and then put it in your pants when you're gonna leave the house. But yeah, this is great. Um, and uh, I, I open bottles enough that uh, the bottle opener is gonna come in handy. Um, the nail puller, I don't do that a lot, but it certainly is convenient around the house if I needed to do that. Now, and then the pride uh, part of it, you know, I mean, that's that's absolutely something. That I can uh, that I can get down with. That's that's something that is uh, absolutely welcome uh, in an EDC uh, scenario where you're you don't want to use your knife, right? That's great. Also, like the look of it. It's, you know, it's got the little the the aggressive kind of angry look and the snout, and it, this this part's the mouth, and then they've got the cool uh, titanium engraving in here. Um, it's just cool. I, I, I like how that looks. I take one with nothing on it, just totally plain. And I'd also, it'd be cool if there was some texturing on there, you know, but it, whatever, it, it doesn't really need to be that way. It's also very easy to hang on to, right? I don't necessarily feel like I have to have a full four finger grip on this kind of thing, because I'm not going to be doing anything with it that I really need that much leverage. So it's got this nice area under here where you can kind of lock in and there's some jimping up here. You can choke up if you're you know, opening a bottle if you're doing some prying test. I mean, however you're going to hold this thing, it's convenient. There's even a little lanyard hole back here. If you want to put a lanyard on it, that's great. If not, no big deal. It's out of the way. And the pocket clip is not, uh, uh, you know, being, well, the, the, the lanyard hole is not being prioritized over the pocket clip. Um, now, considering this is actually set into the titanium, it looks like, I mean, saying that it's only right-handed carry doesn't make a lot of sense because you could just put this in your pocket this way on the left-handed side. I mean, there doesn't need to be a mounting, you know, it doesn't need to be mounted on the other side because the only difference is which way the bottle opener is facing. And that's un unlike a, a blade, it's it's not dangerous to have it facing one way or another. You know, that I think you guys kind of understand what I'm saying. Knives have to be, the pocket clips have to be specific, specifically mounted for right or left-handed carry uh, because they have blades and the way that they are facing or how they open will determine whether or not it's safe in that pocket. Right, this, this doesn't need to be that case. So that's fine, just mounts on one side. You also, if you don't need the pocket clip, just take the pocket clip off and throw it in your pocket, right? 
uh, it's it's fine. Or just throw it in the uh, the console of your truck or you know wherever you think you might need it. You know a junk drawer. Uh, keep it where it's convenient. It's it's a wonderful wonderful item. Um, I like how the titanium looks. Uh, I like that uh, the the finish on it is kind of that bead blasted kind of tumbled finish. Um, it'll pick up some sm some uh, snail trails and this is a you know the type of item that I, I don't mind using at all. The titanium is plenty strong enough to um, withstand you know whatever it is that you're going to do with it. There are no sharp edges where they don't need to be sharp. The bottle opener is, and the area down here where you're going to pry or, or pull nails is a little sharp, uh, but that's you, you want it to be that way. You want it to be thin enough to where it gets underneath things. And honestly, you could use the edge to, to open a package if you don't have a knife on you. You know, simple, easy. It's, it's going to do the trick, and uh, the hook, you know, for the bottle opener is absolutely perfect. This is, <laughs> this is the best little EDC pry tool. I mean, I love the little, um, the one that I've got on my keychain is the, the Kershaw one um, is the PT. The, Ker the is, is that what it is? Super inexpensive. It's made out of steel, right? With the titanium one, it'll never rust. You know, with the the Kershaw one, will eventually rust because it's just a thing that's hanging on my keys and it gets thrown around. Um, and the Kershaw one's made in China. So as much as I love that one, I, I like this one better. I, I just do. I mean, it'll even work as a, a flathead screwdriver in a pinch if you really have to. You know, it might de depending on how the the head is set. How, how big the head is, you know, it might not work, but yeah, this, uh, this fits into a bunch of different roles. It is expensive for a simple titanium item. You know, you're looking at about 88 bucks on the, uh, the, the maker's website. Um, to me, uh, you know, that's, that's going to be just lo looking at this object and it's like, well, it's just a pry bar, right? It, is it really worth 88 bucks? Um, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's really going to depend on the individual. What I appreciate the most about this item is all of the little uh, conveniences that come out in the design. I mean, this this is my ideal, and for a lot of people, it is the ideal EDC pry bar. He's checked every box as far as things people want. You know, there's a lanyard hole. If you want the lanyard and not a pocket clip, that's how you like to carry it, it's there. It's not in the way. It's got a deep carry pocket clip that is designed perfectly. It's made out of titanium. The entire thing is made out of titanium, so it's not gonna rust, it's gonna be plenty strong. It's light, thin, compact. It's got a bottle opener, it's got a nail pull. I mean, it does, it's, it's just perfect, you know? So can you get items that cost less money that do the same thing? Yeah, but they're not quite designed like this. That's the appeal to this thing. And I think also the fact that it's got the little angry face on it, people like that. But truthfully, yeah, the design here is really, really cool. So how, if, if you see value in that, if you, if you like the same things that I like, and if you're looking for the same things in your EDC pry bar that I look for, right, then this might be more valuable to you than the next person. Um, everybody's got their own value system. Would I buy this thing at 88 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of frustrated that I can't buy it. You know, that, that's one of the only things that I can complain about. Would this, would this thing blow me away at 50 bucks? Oh my gosh. I, yeah. I mean, I'd be seeing its praises. Um, I'm glad it's not a hundred bucks. 88 bucks doesn't blow me away, but do I want it? Would I pay that much for it? I would. You might not. I, I would. Um, this, uh, this is an item that I can recommend if you can get your hands on it. I would not pay more than what they're asking for. Somebody's got this marked up to a hundred bucks on the secondary market. Just wait. Don't, don't do that. I mean, it, it's already a fairly high price, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if, if there's an opportunity to pick one of these up new, I, I would, honestly, I think these are super cool. And I, I've seen a few different colors like on Blade HQ. Um, and so it, it tells me that there, there are different variants of these things every now and then. And the entire thing is titanium. So if you want to do your own, uh, anno job, you know, yeah, great. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, um, in, in some ways it's kind of a blank canvas for that. So I think that's really cool. Um, I really, I feel like I'm on this sort of back burner search for a perfect EDC pry tool. And I've come across a few that I really like, and most of them are always just unavailable. And I think that's because a lot of these things are made in small batch. And there's also, I, I think, pretty high demand for them. So it would be really cool um, to see a whole bunch more of these and we could all get our hands on them. You know, that would be, that'd be really cool, but it, uh, it doesn't seem like that's necessarily the case. This was a different type of review because it was a different type of item. So, you know, the end result of this thing is it is perfectly designed. It is a wonderful tool. It's, it's got a little bit of a high price on it. Um, but it's the, the value on the item is going to come down to everybody's individual, you know, opinion on, on value. And that's the case with any item that I've ever reviewed. And honestly, any item that any person can pay for, um, that, that, uh, you know, offers some sort of utilitarian benefit, you know, arguably anything. So yeah, yeah, I like this. So that's the end result of this review. I think this is really, really cool. And now I want one. <laughs> 
So this will be going in my um, non-knife uh, 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 review uh, playlist. You can find that playlist. I've got a bunch of stuff in there that uh, is, is not a knife that I've reviewed. Uh, but this is really cool. Thanks again at Eric B. Like for letting me take a look at this little guy. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative uh, or entertaining in any way, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this metal complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.